We're here to mark the 30th anniversary of the Environment Foundation, uh, which more recently became the Foundation for Democracy and Sustainable Development. And I can't think of anybody better placed to give us insights into the catalytic role the Foundation has played over the years than John Elkington, who was chair for more than a decade um, for the Foundation. So, so John, what was the initial impetus for the creation of the Foundation 30 years ago? Well, the original funding came from insurance uh, policies that were sold particularly in the United States market for what was called environmental impairment uh, liabilities. How did the Foundation operate in its early days? I think one of the things that um, struck me when I first came across it was that it was pretty weighty, it was pretty establishment, it was influential, it held a series of um, uh, conferences, consultations as they were called, out at St George's House uh, at Windsor uh, Castle. But in addition to that, it um, worked with other funders like uh, the Financial Times, the Royal Society of Arts, Shell and so on to uh, launch a series of awards, the um, Pollution Abatement Technology Awards, the Better Environment Awards for Industry. And what's interesting to remember is that that sequence of awards then became both a Queen's Award in this country for environmental technology and so on, and also became the, the uh, Better Environment Awards for Industry, a European scheme. So the, the foundation did actually have quite a big impact in, in, in that sort of area. Right, and, and you mentioned consultations yeah. at, at Windsor Castle. What, what sort of people came to those consultations well, and the, what the, was the, the intention? Yeah. Behind well, these would happen uh, once a year and uh, very well uh, uh, thought through and programmed and they would be issues like, or focusing on issues like health, on energy, um, on climate change even. Um, and there's lots of people who would come, uh, would be, if, if I were being cruel, I'd say the great and the good. I mean, okay. these are people who were uh, pretty well connected and, 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 and movers and shakers and so on. But one of the, one of the characteristics of these um, events, and particularly over time, is that they also reached out to young people. There was, mm -hmm. a, there was a very strong uh, uh, emphasis on trying to get younger uh, people involved. And um, with the consultations, both with the great and the good and the young people, yeah. um, the intention was to scrutinise values and value systems. Wasn't well, that, it? What were that, to achieve that came that? out over a, 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 a period of time in the sense that the initially these things were more or less freestanding. And then Helen Holdaway took over as um, director and for quite a number of years was absolutely crucial in shaping the uh, foundation's agenda. And, and one of the things that we try to do is to look behind these big uh, agendas, these big challenges, and say, you know, in terms of the responses, in terms of the solutions, what are the values that, that link these, uh, and to some degree link the, uh, the, the, the barriers uh, one to the other? And we started a program uh, exploring the values component uh, of, mm -hmm. uh, of this agenda. Then, and sadly, uh, Helen became uh, quite ill, so that, that, that went into uh, 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 stasis for a period of time, and then we came into the Foundation for Democracy and Sustainable Development uh, era. Certainly, they, uh, Helen had done quite remarkable work mm. um, as director, um, and this also leads into uh, a battle that the Foundation <laughs> had to yes. fight. Yeah. Uh, we're really used to the term sustainable development now, that, yeah. that is something uh, that we all regard uh, as, uh, as it were, a good objective. But mm. um, it wasn't easy, was it? Why was there a battle over this term well, for you? Part of the reason is when I, I took over as chair in 1995, and, and, and um, I was really keen that the, the foundation should not just simply focus on environment, mm. but that we should open out the, uh, the, 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 the agenda to look at sustainable development. And we had a, a, an early uh, consultation, on, in fact, on the top of, um, I think it was Derry and Tom's, the sort of uh, uh, Kensington High Street. Uh, superstore at the time, and um, the, the focus there was on what we call the triple bottom line. So we then started to think, well, if we're going triple bottom line, we're going sustainability that sort of direction. We really ought to change our charitable objectives uh, and, and just expand them a bit. So we put in an application to the charity commissioners, who really were a Dickensian um, uh, institution at that stage, at least. Um, and they fought back tooth and nail. They really did. They tried to kill the foundation uh, uh, and explicitly told us as much. And Stephen Lloyd, who was uh, our, our lawyer throughout uh, that period, basically just became incensed and thought this was crazy and, 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 and fought back. And it took us four years, but in the end, 
it wasn't simply that we survived as a foundation, but that the concept of sustainable development became a legitimate charitable objective. And more recently, um, the foundation has changed its name and indeed yeah. its focus yet again by becoming the Foundation for Democracy and Sustainable Development. We're going to be having uh, another conversation uh, about that with the director for the years when it uh, had become the foundation, Halina Ward. Um, but just looking back over the years of the mm. Environment Foundation, how would you sum up its, its achievements? Well, I think it, 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 it was the first ever environmental initiative by the City of London, by the, mm -hmm. the, the financial centre of London. Mm -hmm. It was quite a substantial uh, one. And I think over a period of time, it morphed, it evolved, uh, and that was inevitable. But I think as a catalyst, it did a great deal to, whether it was developing the awards, well it w whether it was fighting the uh, 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 charity missions or whatever, to advance the leading edge of the mm -hmm. uh, agenda. And I think that the democracy... Uh, element fitted very much into that space. So I'd be delighted to hear what both Helena and also yourself, John, because I think you, uh, as a sort of twin dynamic of that stage of the Foundation's development, uh, have a great deal of interest to say on that. Okay, thank you very much, John. Um, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity.